You were optimistic with the weather, wasn't you? Oh, got shorts on. I've got, I've, got, I've got my socks pulled up, don't worry. Look. So all, all the furniture that you're sitting on and, and the pagodas that we're under is all um, from Riley. So Riley is owner of Sons Lifestyle, um, family run like we are. Uh, so Riley, I'll let you introduce yourself, mate, and um, let us know a bit about your background, how you got into it all. Yeah, um, yes, we do all this nice furniture that's keeping you all comfy, allowing Corker to do their outdoor events when it's uh, raining, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, how did we get on to It's actually my dad's idea. So he, he used to do um, like a polycarbonate type pergola roof. Yeah, how long was your dad in the... He was in it quite a while, wasn't he? Yeah, he was doing it for a few... He used to be in like the nightclub industry, but then he stopped doing that and... Um, started selling these polycarbonate type roofs um little little outbuildings basically going around the country little one one man band building it himself um and then yeah he found a new product um in holland which is basically this that's uh above us and thought there would be a brilliant uh seller in the uk no one else was really doing it at the time um so he came to me and my business partner at the time i was traveling and said, I've found a new product. Um, I'd been helping him in, in between traveling to um, basically build these with him when, when I had the time. So I had a little bit of understanding of it. And then... Uh, was that through COVID? When... No, this was, this was before COVID. Um, and then when we started, we'd just, we'd just got our first shipment in um, of pergolas. I think the day we went into lockdown, like fully locked down, can't go out of the house. So we was a bit worried then thinking, oh, what's going to actually happen here? And luckily, like I was saying earlier, everyone spent time in their garden and needed to do up their garden. So, yeah, it, it was a massive help for us, basically, as bad as it was. Um, it actually, yeah, projected us massively then. Um, so, yeah, that was that was when we first started. So what made you... so? You know, obviously, been to the trade shows that you've been to as well, and you know, there's so many different furniture brands out there that you could have partnered with to bring into the UK. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know, I remember coming across Suns out in Germany myself, and you know, amazing Dutch brand. What made you choose Suns Lifestyle over any other brand there? Because there is a lot of brands there. There's a lot, yeah. Um, it, the main reason was the look and the feel, the style of the brand, the furniture they were doing. It was like quite different to anything else they were bringing out a lot of nice colors and things like that um and the pergolas as well they were doing a lot of the pergolas there wasn't really brands that were doing both at the time um and where where my dad was already sort of doing this sort of thing we already had a little bit of a business model for pergolas um which is why we really mainly went for them and the, the furniture was a bit of a side project to it so this was our main main focus um but yeah we just we just love the look of the brand and things like that when we when we saw them at spogo we felt like they stood out quite a bit differently to anyone else and it is a premium product price and quality what makes it that premium product what what material because there is some umbrella fabrics and stuff like that what is the material that allows it to be out all year round and not, not being covered? Because we've had this all out all year round. Um, yes, yeah, a bit of a mixture of things, really. This is a mixed weave. It's similar to Sunbrella in its, in its fabric. Um, so it's all weatherproof and leave it out all year round. Um, it's a mixed weave, so it doesn't feel plasticky. A lot, some Sunbrella stuff feels quite plasticky. It's a lot of like sensor techs. Um, but this is a different material called Sunproof. Um, and like the things like the cushions, you know, the size of the cushions, things like that they're not they're not going short on materials basically so that that's why it's such a high quality piece of furniture along with like teak the teak wood that they use a lot of it's grade b um teak and it's like the same again it's not they're not shortening materials then they're not using like thin thin pieces of wood especially on like dining tables and things like that it's all um large pieces of wood which are yeah which keep it really nice yeah, and I definitely think you notice that when you sit down on them. It's just like you know, being in being indoors on a sofa. I cannot tell you how comfortable I've been all day on these. It's so, yeah, it's amazing. And I honestly can't believe that they've been out all year round. Yeah, yeah. It just seems 
mad. This yeah. is not what my garden furniture looks like this time of year. So what kind of maintenance do they need? So um, like once a year, they do need a clean down, really. If you leave it out all year round, you probably are going to need to jet wash it clean. Did you jet wash these? Yeah. So it does need a jet wash really once a year. If you leave it out all winter, naturally it's going to get a little bit green and things like that, depending how much greenery you have around trees, overhanging and things like that. You know, leaves staying on there. It does need a little bit more uh, cleaning, but some people choose to cover it throughout the winter if they're not going to use the space. Uh, just for those few months, we do covers as well. Um, but yeah, the fact that it just doesn't need cleaning, you just pressure wash it. Um, after you've pressure washed it, you probably should apply, we do like a furniture protector. So you basically just spray that back on and it gives it that like water repellent sort of feel. Um, but the foam inside is quick dry foam and underneath there's like a mesh right at the bottom. So when the water goes through, it, if it, in a really heavy downpour, if it got through, it goes straight through because it's open cell structured foam. So it goes straight through underneath and then just comes out the bottom, which means that it dries super quickly as well. So we were talking about the trend earlier of almost bringing that inside living outside. Yeah. Obviously, this feels very much part of that. What other trends have you sort of seen recently within the industry? I think the main, the biggest trend we've seen is pergolas. Like the, when we first started doing them, that there wasn't really lots of them around um it is becoming a little bit saturated now in terms of the market but um other trends things like neolith which is like a sintered stone is becoming a bit more popular um because as good as the teak wood is people don't really like the maintenance and a lot of people don't you know some people don't mind it but a lot of people don't like the maintenance the upkeep of it and having to oil it the fact it changes in the sun and wind and rain you know so a lot of people are liking um neolith which is a sintered stone um as opposed to the wood for like tabletops um and also rope is becoming really popular in terms of furniture so it's coming away from rattan and going heavily towards rope as like the new market trend which we expect will be for many years to be fair so as the industry is getting I suppose busier um, with pergolas how are you sort of trying to stay ahead of that I think we're where we get a lot of customer feedback where we've been doing it one one of the ones been doing it the longest um, we've had a lot of product development we've got a lot of installers we travel nationwide so we've got installers all around the country and they all come back with feedback on what we could be doing better what we could change how we can make more sizes available more side options um, just to make it a bit more of a, a room outside um, rather than just a pergola so where we've made a lot of product developments I feel like we're staying quite ahead of the game there um, and also providing maximum amount of sizes um, rather than it having to be bespoke because you know everyone's garden is a different size so without it having to be bespoke so we make them modular so that we can get to a lot of different sizes within keeping the price like reasonable. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, I think, how we're standing ahead. Nice. So I guess alongside all that product development, what does what do the next few years entail for the business? Um, at, at the moment, it's just trying to grow the brand still. Um, that's like my main aim. So this year we've been focusing a lot more on the showroom. Um, so making that really the best, the best that it can be. Um, so that's come a long way. There's a few more finishing touches, but that's been our main aim for this summer. Where's your showroom? In Essex, just outside of Brentwood in a place called Herongate. Um, so it's a few minutes off the M25, nice and easy to get to for your customers. Um, but yeah, you have a few people that you've sent down recently. I see a lot of people that say they've come from Corker and things like that. Um, but yeah, our main aim is just getting that showroom perfect basically this year. Um, so we've slowed down on a lot of the shows. We were doing a lot of exhibitions previously, um, which we've slowed down a bit on this year to get the showroom done. And then we'll probably go back to focusing more on shows next year a little bit. So it's not just obviously retail you work with, is it? You work with designers and trade as well. So you do have trade accounts and the showroom that you've created down there is amazing. It's massive now and you've got loads of new pergolas. What are the new pagodas that you've got in that showroom um, and the difference to the ones we've got here? 
Yeah, so our main focus has always been these manual roofs that we're sitting below, uh, which is a manual louvered roof. Um, and this year we're focusing more on electric louvered roofs um, and electric retractable roofs as well. So the roof opens right the way back, um, which is proving really popular. And we're also working a lot on different side options. So rather than it just be these manual screens that we've got working on uh, electric screens but also like slide invented doors um, shutters for the sides you can create a bit more of a bespoke room basically and then my last question mate is you talk about you know growing the brand awareness which i think you're you're brilliant at that and you've got seventy five thousand followers on instagram yeah. how do you find and what sort of tips can you give that um you know you've done in your social media sort of journey yeah. to get that many followers is it working with the influencers how, how do you how have you gained that many followers i think it's just a, a little bit of everything to be fair like our main our main game was um just building the brand and getting the name out there as much as we could in the first few years so we've done like i said a lot of exhibitions um, but also we work with a lot of yeah influencers or mainly like home accounts people that are like focused on their home being like that that's their account basically it's not like a personal account it's just a home outdoor living account um so we focus a lot on people like that because they're doing a lot of you know trends trend-led stuff um and they're good people to sort of push the the knowledge of the product out there as well to more people that might not know exactly you know where to buy from and things like that um, so a lot of the home accounts really helped us grow on Instagram, I would say. Um, also, I have a social media manager who takes care of all of it, so I, I don't really have to do any of that. So <laughs> ask her that question next. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brilliant. You got anything else to ask? Thank you, Riley. Much appreciated, mate, for coming down. Very much. Boom.